Hi, this is Deborah Sable Thornbrew, and I'm going to introduce you to Module 4 of our CSIT 134 PowerPoint class using PowerPoint 2016. Here I have already logged into Canvas, and I'm going to now click into the overview page for Module 4. In the overview page, it talks about the chapter 4 that you're going to be reading. And this module and chapter concentrates on customizing images, illustrations, and themes. The kinds of things you're going to work with here are shapes, smart art, slide masters uh, is a new concept I think for you, and screenshots and screen clippings, as well as um, adjusting the color and special uh, visual effects of different images. You're also going to learn how to create a digital photo album in PowerPoint and design a custom template that you can use repeatedly in the future. Here we have our learning objectives. These are the outcomes, what you're going to learn in this um, module. Take note at the bottom of the list there is something called optional. This is called PowerPoint Designer. It's a feature only found in Microsoft Office 365. It is not a feature found in PowerPoint 2016. Now, um, for this class, we use PowerPoint 2016, not 365. So I cannot demonstrate this feature to you, and it is certainly not a requirement in this class. If you happen to have that feature, if you own 365 and you have it on your computer, uh, I do encourage you to try it out. It can really help you make choices about your pictures in a slideshow, but again, it's not required. Down here, this is the summary of what you're going to do for Module 4. First, you're going to read the lecturette here in Canvas. You're going to read Chapter 4 in your textbook, and you're going to watch a video clip and upload a one slide file, PowerPoint file. Uh, we'll get to that in just a few moments. You're also going to do, as usual, a regular uh, PowerPoint 2016 project, and you're going to post a reply to the Module 4 discussion. I'm going to click Next to get to the next piece. In the Module 4 lecturette, uh, take note here at the top that at the bottom of the page there is a link to a video that demonstrates what master slides are, how to use them, and templates. Both things are included in the video. This video is one that I created for a prior class that used PowerPoint 2013, but the steps, procedures, and features are the same in 2016. So that's why I posted that video. It's at the bottom of this page. So please read this lecture and it talks about some theory, a little bit of theory, why we're using these things. Uh, it's important for you to understand how these things are applied. Here is a picture that shows a view in PowerPoint of the master slide. There's more than one master slide actually. There's one, what I call a grand master, the, the overall master slide, and then underneath that there are submasters as well. So um, at first it may seem a little confusing, but when you start playing with them and using them, you'll see that they can really come in handy. Uh, here it talks about templates in the lecturette. This is a picture of some thumbnails of different standard templates that you can find in PowerPoint. And please, anything that says note or important note, please be sure to read what that says. Here's the video I talked about. This is the video I made that shows how to use master slides and templates. Now I'm going to click Next. Here it talks about uh, what you're supposed to do in the chapter. It's really just a plain uh, reading of the chapter. You don't have to do anything. Now I know here in the video it says you need to do the Let Me Try interactive tutorials that you will be graded on them. That is not correct. You are not going to be graded on any of the tutorials in Chapter 4. I do encourage you to use them because they can help you learn the skills but uh, let me emphasize here, you do not need to do them. They're not required. They won't be graded after all. So it's just reading and practicing. So I'm going to click Next, go to the next page. 
This is a special video, video I made on how to customize an image and so please watch the video. It's at the bottom of this page. It's This is kind of a fun thing to do to apply different artistic effects. I know some of you have already played with this and done uh, special visual effects on some graphics. This asks you to uh, create a single slide with one graphic on it and place the artistic if one of the artistic effects on that graphic. So you need to be aware of the difference between an artistic effect and other special effects, special visual effects. Artistic effects are separate and different from the other visual effects. So please, before you do this, this is worth 10 points, uh, please watch this video here before you do it and then go ahead and follow the instructions on what to do here. Okay, I'm going to click Next. Here is the main meat and potatoes of Module 4. This tells you what project to do. This is a challenge project, which means you have a lot more leeway on uh, and creative license on what you can do here. You can make lots of different choices that are correct. Um, but you do have to follow certain guidelines. So what you're going to do is open your book to page P4290 and complete Challenge Project 4-8. If you use the online SimNet version of the textbook, just navigate to Chapter 4 and click to open the link for the project. It's called, just look for Challenge Project 4-8 and you'll find it there. In addition to what the textbook tells you to do, please follow these rules as well. Your slideshow must have no less than 8 slides and no more than 12 slides. Do not set up your slideshow to run automatically on any timed setting. Leave it to where you just click the mouse to move to the next slide. You don't have to include transitions or animations, but you can include them if you want to. If you think they will enhance the slideshow, that would be fine. Uh, if you choose to copy text from an article or a web page and insert that text into your slides instead of creating and writing your own wording, that's okay. You can do that, but you must credit your source, okay? Be sure that you include the URL address of the web page if you're quoting from a web page or uh, from any journal or article title and author. Please, just like you would do on a printed research report document, make sure you credit your sources. When you're finished, you're going to uh, come back to this page and upload your PowerPoint file here. Okay, just like always, you're going to click this blue Submit Assignment button to upload and submit. Uh, please take note also if you happen to do this project early before the deadline, the due date deadline, um, and you don't like uh, the way it, it uh, you don't like the score that you earned, if you would want to try and do better, if it's before the due date, you can submit it again and I will um, evaluate the second upload and whatever whichever one has the higher grade is the one you would keep. So if you have any questions about that, please email me. I'm going to click Next. Okay, and this is the last part of Module 4. This is the discussion. I call it In Your Opinion. This is something where you're going to give your opinion about how businesses, how a business might benefit from using a photo album, a digital photo album, slideshow, a type of slideshow. How can that uh, promote the business or improve a customer's interest in the business? So please just follow the directions here. Um, before you answer and post your answer, you might want to do a couple of things. First of all, up here, this is a link to an example PowerPoint slideshow file that is designed as a digital photo album. This is one that has already been created, so you can click this to open the PowerPoint file and uh, take a look at how, let it run, run the show, and you'll see how a photo album can look 
in PowerPoint. And then here, if you want to know how to build a photo album, in addition to what the textbook says, there's a video here that you can run that shows you, demonstrates how to create a photo album. However, this video, the photo album that he creates in this video, is, is a business-oriented one, but it's kind of... Um, Oh, I don't know, stilted. He doesn't add any transitions or anything interesting. So if you want to see what a, a smoother looking photo album looks like, you would need to look at this uh, PowerPoint file up here. Okay, and that is the end. If you click Next from this page, it's just going to tell you you have reached the end of the module. So if you have any questions about Module 4, please email me, as usual, dsablethornbrew at maricosta.edu, and I'll be happy to help you.